Welcome to Lyons Township High School Physics. Uh, today we have an example uh, involving the magnetic field that uh, goes around a current carrying wire. And we're going to bend the wire into a horseshoe. And here's the shape right here. So we have a, a horseshoe, uh, a 2L length, an L length, and a 2L length. The current's going counterclockwise, um, labeled I. And um, we're going to find the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field right there. So um, which way does it point and how strong is it in terms of these things and fundamental constants. Um, and we're going to, in order to do that, we're going to use um, a result uh, of the Bios of R law. So uh, we're not going to derive that result here. We're just going to use it carefully uh, to solve this problem. Now, having said all that, um, which way does the magnetic field point there? Well, here's the deal. You've got three segments of wire. We're going to figure out which way the, the magnetic field for each segment points, and then vectorally add those three fields up. Well, in this case, the downward wire, the, the, we're going to use our right-hand rule. Thumb is the current. Fingers represent the magnetic field that circulates around that wire. Well, over here, th this first wire, which, by the way, we'll label that A. We'll call this one B. We'll call that one C. Um, wire A makes a field pointing out of the page at that point. Um, and by the way, we'll give that a label. We'll call it point P. Okay? Uh, wire B, if I do my right-hand rule, also makes a field pointing out of the page there. And wire C makes a field pointing out of the page. So since all three wires make fields that point, a magnetic field that points out of the page, we're just going to simply add the three fields together. Um, and that'll be our net magnetic field at point P. Um, now, as far as figuring out, calculating that field, okay, the magnitude of it, um, we're going to use the result of the Bios of Bar Law, which um, I'll kind of remind you of very briefly here. So if we have any finite length of wire that's carrying current, all right, and um, we're looking for the magnetic field, let's say, right there, which in this case would point out the page as well. Um, you look at the very beginning current, the current at the very beginning of the wire, and the current at the very end of the wire. And from each of those currents, you draw radii to the point of interest. So we'll call that R1, and we'll call that R2. Okay? This would be theta1. Now, you have to be real careful. Theta2, in other words, you're, you're cross-producting. You're doing um, the current cross R in this case. Okay? And when you do the current cross R here, well, there's an acute angle. Over here, you've got to go all the way from here to there. That's an obtuse angle. So theta 2 will be obtuse. And it'll turn out that'll actually matter here um, as far as the signs of our answer go. The result we've got in class is B for this finite length of wire is mu naught i over 4 pi a, a being the perpendicular distance from the wire to that point P, um, times cosine of theta 1 minus cosine of theta 2. So that's the result we got in class. Um, so we're going to use that result here very carefully. Um, notice that theta 2 is obtuse. Okay, Cosine of that angle is negative. And in this equation, you would have minus a negative, which would actually turn into a positive. So that's going to come into play here a little bit. Uh, so I'm going, to, I'm going to erase this now, but that's the result that we're using from class. Okay? Now, um, as far as uh, this problem goes, um, I hope you'll note that the magnetic field created by A, which is, again, out of the page, and the magnetic field created by C, which is out of the page, are going to be equal in magnitude. Um, it's the same length of wire, the same distance away from point P at all points. So basically, I'm going to find the magnetic field created by A. I'm going to double it. That'll be A plus C. And then onto that, I will add B in a moment. Okay? So we're going to start with the magnetic field created by segment A. Okay, so that's mu naught I over uh, 4 pi. Now, what's A in this case? Well, A is the perpendicular distance from the wire to point P, which is half of that length. So that's L over 2. And then we've got cosine theta 1 
minus cosine theta 2. So the, the only other thing you got to do here is figure out, well, what's theta 1, what's theta 2? Well, the first current is right there. That's the beginning of this current. That angle is 90 degrees. So theta 1 is 90 degrees, and cosine of 90 is 0. Okay. Theta 2, okay. Well, here is R2, okay. Um, there's the last current. There's our radius. There is our angle, which is obtuse, okay. Now, um, we're going to get an exact answer here. We're not going to pull a calculator out. So I need to figure out the cosine of theta 2 without actually knowing the angle itself. Well, I will start with this. It, the cosine of that angle is going to be negative. The magnitude of that cosine of that angle is going to equal the magnitude of the cosine of this angle. Okay, so I'm going to find the cosine of that angle and just slap a negative in front of it. Um, the cosine of this angle, if I look at this right triangle, is just adjacent over hypotenuse. G adjacent is 2L. What's the hypotenuse? Well, this leg over here is L over 2. I'm just going to do Pythagorean's theorem. So R squared, in this case I'll call R2 squared, is equal to the square root of 2L quantity squared plus L over 2 quantity squared. So that becomes 4L squared plus L squared over 4. Common denominator would be 4 on the bottom. That becomes 16L squared over 4 plus um, 1L squared over 4. Uh, that gives you root 17L squared over 4. You can pull out in, in the L squared and the 4, and this equals uh, L over 2 root 17. So that's our hypotenuse, okay? And we're going to use that actually quite a bit here. So cosine of this angle is simply the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so 2L over that, okay? So cosine of theta 2 is negative 2L over L over 2 root 17, okay? Which reduces down to, well, the L's drop out. This 2 goes up there. You get negative 4 over root 17. So what we have left is B sub A equals, and now we're just, we're mostly in math class at this point. Uh, we got mu naught I over 4 pi L over 2 times cosine of the first angle is 0, minus negative 4 over root 17. Um, now we can do a little more canceling here. I'll go switch colors. Uh, so that 4 and that 4 drop out. Uh, that 2 goes to the numerator. And you get BA equals 2 mu naught I over uh, pi root 17 and there's still an L down there, okay? So that is the um, magnetic field created by just segment A, okay? Which is also going to equal the magnetic field created by segment C. So I can, I can put this equals B sub C as well, okay? So all I got to do now is find B of segment B, okay? Um, which is going to be less because not only is that segment shorter, it's also further away. So I'll do that separate. I'll do that up here. So I'll resketch that. Here's segment B, current going that way. Okay. Here's our point. Our point A in this case, how the perpendicular distance, well that's 2L. Okay. Our current starts over here and ends over there. Okay. So this is our 1 and this is our 2. Now notice for all the radii I'm drawing, I'm drawing them from the current that's making the field to the point that I'm interested in, okay? This will be our new theta 1, and this will be our new theta 2. Oh, actually, take that back. Here's our current. There's our radius. The obtuse angle is going to be theta 2, okay? Now, I'm using the same equation again. I'll, I'll rewrite it. B sub B, okay, will be mu naught I over 4 pi A times cosine theta 1 minus cosine theta 2, okay? In this case, A is 2L, okay? So we got that. Cosine of theta 1, okay? So um, we already know this hypotenuse. That R1 is the same thing as this R2 was. It's the same, it's the same value. It's, just, it's the L over 2 root 17, all right? So um, 
The cosine of that angle is just this over the hypotenuse. This is half the length of that wire. It's just half L. So this is L over 2 divided by L over 2 root 17, which the L over 2's both drop out, and you get um, that equals 1 over root 17. How about theta 2? What's the cosine of theta 2? Well, theta 2 is simply the supplement of theta 1. So cosine of theta 2 is going to be the same value but negative. So this is negative 1 over root 17. So we pretty much have it. Um, B sub B is mu naught i over 4 pi, a in this case is 2L, okay, times, you get 1 over root 17 minus negative 1 over root 17. All right, so now we're in math class again. Um, this turns into 2 over root 17. That 2 up there and this 2 down there will drop out. And you get B sub B is mu naught i over, still got our 4 pi, okay, that 2 and that 2 drop out and you got your root 17 down there, okay. The only thing left to do is add these together, all right. So I will do that. Eh, I might have room here. Um, all right. So the total magnetic field, total magnetic field is BA plus BC. So two of those, so two of these will be, to make that into a four. So we've got a four mu naught I over pi root 17L plus that dude, which is mu naught I over 4 pi root 17. Oh, and <laughs> forgot my L over here, L, L. There you go, okay? Um, now, you can get common denominators here, so if I multiply top and bottom of this by 4, the denominators are the same, so um, that would become 16. 16 of these plus 1 of these is 17 mu naught i over 4 pi root 17L. And your math teacher would be very, very happy with you if you said, hey man, I got a 17 up there, root 17 down there, I'll reduce that. And your total magnetic field becomes um, root 17 mu naught i over 4 pi L. And that is our final answer. So again, um, we're using um, the result of the Bios of our law to come up with a, 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 a numerical answer. And at this point, if I gave you a number for numbers for I and L, you get an actual value in your calculator. But to get a result of for what is the magnetic field at that point created by this shape of wires. So again, we're using uh, the result of the Bios of our law to figure that out. So hope that was helpful. Uh, thank you very much.